So, good evening, everybody. <laughs> I think I have your attention. <laughs> David Bowie was one of the most innovative popular artists of his generation. He was really quite a remarkable man. And he was fascinated by space and also what I would describe as space fantasy. And why not? He grew up in the Apollo era. All of his songs that converted him and took him to mega stardom, they all had something connected with astronomy or space in their title. Songs like Starman or Space Oddity. Some of you might remember Ground Control to Major Tom, I'm sure. But um, all of these things just shot him into this, uh, into this mega stardom. And this particular track, and I appreciate that it's uh, very poor quality, but it's actually him performing as his, as his alter ego, Ziggy Stardust. And he's singing a song about Ziggy Stardust and his band, The Spiders from Mars. Now, 40 years ago, I don't think David Bowie knew that there really are spiders on Mars. And I'm going to tell you all about them this evening. <laughs> so the title of my talk is actually The Spiders on Mars. But to begin with, I have to set the scene a little bit. And the first thing that I've got to do is to tell you a little bit about the atmosphere of Mars. And then slowly, we'll get to the spiders bit. This is one of my favorite pictures of Mars taken from a remote uh, distance. It's Mars as seen by the Osiris Imaging System on the European Space Agency's Rosetta spacecraft about six hours before the flyby that took place in February 2007. And it's a nice picture because you can already see the influence of Mars's atmosphere. You can see up here what's referred to as the North Polar Hood from condensation in the atmosphere there. You can also look here in the Southern Hemisphere where you can see condensates, fogs around the morning terminator on Mars. This is already indicating to you that Mars has an atmosphere. That atmosphere itself, however, is only one one hundred and fiftieth of the pressure of the atmosphere that we have here on Earth. And it's not a wonderful nitrogen oxygen atmosphere, but it is one of my favorite gases. It's carbon dioxide. It goes well with the fog when we're performing our rock songs. <laughs> now, this in itself is not particularly staggering. But there is one property of the atmosphere that I do find staggering. And that is that when we talk about this pressure here, it's not constant. It varies over the year. And it varies by quite an extreme amount. And it's best shown in this observation from the Viking experiments, the Viking landers, from the 1970s. What you can see along here is time covering one Mars year. It's divided up here into sols. A Martian day is referred to as a sol. A Martian day being 37 minutes longer than an Earth day. My father always considered this to be a good reason to go to Mars because he said, well, this would give me 37 minutes more drinking time. <laughs> but this is one Mars year, and here we have the pressure at the Mars landings, at the Viking lander sites. And if you look at the numbers here, you can see that the pressure varies by 25% on the surface. It's really quite a lot. The other thing that you can see about it is that there's a strong dip here, which turns out to be the end of winter 
in the Southern Hemisphere. So what's happening? Well, Mars has seasons just like ours. And in winter, the Southern Hemisphere and the South Pole becomes dark for 300 days. And it gets cold. It goes down to a minus 125 degrees centigrade. And during that time, the carbon dioxide goes out of the atmosphere and freezes onto the polar cap. And as it does so during this long polar night, particularly in the south and southern hemisphere, the pressure in the entire atmosphere drops. It actually turns out that 25% of the atmosphere participates in this exchange between the atmosphere and solid ice on the poles. And this leads to an effect that you can have anything up to a one meter layer of carbon dioxide ice on the surface of the polar cap at the end of winter. But of course, you come to the end of winter, like we will come to the end of win this winter here on Earth, and when you do, that carbon dioxide will sublime again, the ice will sublime and go put this carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere, and the pressure will rise again. And of course, now we have movies even of this. You can see, for example, this rather short little movie, which shows how the southern polar cap shrinks as summer and spring, as spring comes and moves into summer. This is only a short movie, look in particular. This region here, for example, you can see it disappearing as we move towards southern summer on Mars. But to take this further, and also to start thinking about spiders, we need to concentrate and think about new methods of investigating this process. And for that, we need experiments. And here, we are going to use quite an experiment. We're going to be using high-resolution imaging. In particular, we're going to be using a camera on board NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. That imaging system is called HiRISE. That stands for High Resolution Imaging Science Experiment. But let's make no bones about it. This thing is a spy camera around Mars. And it's not the type of camera that you'll be able to buy at Interdiscount or at Media Markt or at Walmart. It's not a little thing like that. And five megapixels? <laughs> What's that? This thing is this size, and here's our man standing next to it. It's actually a 50-centimeter telescope. 